Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy, and in this video, I'm gonna be answering a few questions about the Flash Forge AD5X, that is the successor to the Adventure 5M that just went on sale last week. Now, as of right now, there aren't any reviews about it. No one, as far as I know, has gotten this printer and has filmed things about it, but I do know that Flash Forge is in Germany for Formnext, where they'll be showing off this printer along with some other things that they have in store. But until then, I decided to ask them a few questions. Questions that were on my mind as well as questions that you guys had for Flash Forge as well. And ironically, some of the questions that I asked were the ones that you wanted to know too. So I've got five questions in particular that I asked Flash Forge over the weekend and here's what they had to say about those. So my first question was about the possibility of upgrading the Adventurer 5M. And we've heard in the past that it's not possible because they use a different extruder. But I wanted to see if there was a little bit more to it than that. So the answer that I received was the extruder system, including the module, connector, and main board is in different designs. Some technical issues need to be resolved in order to be able to use the AD. 5M series. So kind of more or less what we already knew about the extruder, but we got a little bit more information saying that it also includes the module and the connector and the main board. Didn't go into specifics, that's exactly why, but that still just remains the fact that it doesn't look like you're gonna be able to up upgrade the Adventure 5M to use the new IFS. So in addition to the extruder being different, the hot end is also different. It's not gonna be using the same hot end attachments that the Adventure 5M uses. And at the same time, although the printer looks exactly the same, everything isn't in the exact same spot as it was with the Adventure 5M, which led me to ask them about what the filament changing process is going to be like when you use multicolor. My question was, does the AD5X purge filament when changing colors? And if so, where does it go? To which Flash Forge replied, yes, it will be dropped down organically. A simple DIY box will be highly recommended. So that being said, let's take a look at a picture of the rear of the 85X. And as you can see here, it does have that open spot for a poop chute that as they said, you can just put a little bin down there to catch everything. But you may also notice compared to the Adventure 5M, things are not exactly in the same spot. You'll see that there is a new connector port back there for the IFS that is not present on the back of the Adventure 5M. So one would have to assume that in order to upgrade the 5M to use the intelligent filament system, you would probably have to replace the entire rear of the uh, printer, at least that panel, so that everything can line up the way that it's supposed to. So that may also be a thing that gets in the way that at the end of the day, if you're gonna be replacing all that, then it's probably not worth the cost or the production to make a new rear panel like that. Um, but yeah, that is just something that I noticed. Let's move on to the next question. And this has to do with replacement parts because if someone wanted to make a print farm around these printers, you're gonna need those parts. So I asked them, when do you anticipate replacement parts will be available? And they replied, will be confirmed once the first batch of samples is shipped out. I will, up, I will follow up and keep you posted. So don't really know yet. So that's kind of just in the air, but it is very, very essential that those replacement parts be made available as soon as possible. Because like I said, this is sort of being positioned as being print farm friendly, especially since they have compared the amount of space that you can save with this printer to like a bamboo lab printer, whether it's the A1 or the X1. So you definitely need those replacement parts uh, to be available. Next up is about the enclosure. We know that you can print an enclosure for the Adventure 5M and then buy the enclosure kit to put all the panels in place. But what about the AD5X? I asked, will there be an option to print an enclosure for the AD5X? And they replied, it is proceeding also. It will be highly appreciated if any ideas come up within the community. So I'm gonna take that as a bit of a confirmation that we'll be able to make an enclosure for the 85X. And it sort of makes sense because they've upgraded the hot end to reach 
300 degrees Celsius, which is more than the Adventure 5M. And then the bed can get up to 110 degrees Celsius. So that enables it to print with some of those more advanced materials. However, if you can't enclose it, then you're not gonna have much success trying to do that because those filaments require an enclosure in order to work, you know, generally. But uh, yeah, it looks like that there's gonna be some enclosure options coming. So uh, keep an eye on that and see what comes of it. Now, the last question that was on my mind had to deal with TPU and multi-material printing. I wanted to know what the printer would do with TPU once you switch over from PLA. What are the speeds and stuff like? So I asked, will the print speeds for the TPU preset from the IFS be slower than the PLA and PETG presets? And they replied, TPU preset is slower than PLA and PETG. The actual speed will depend on model designs. And they says that our engineer will help with settings if needed. So I was just kind of curious about that to see if the printer would change the speeds dynamically or if for some reason it would just print TPU at a high speed because of some kind of fancy trickery that they've got going on with the mechanics and whatnot. But it does look like that TPU traditionally is printed slower and the same thing will happen with this one. However, there are some high speed TPUs out there and I'll be curious to know how that works out, but we'll have to wait until the printer actually comes out and I would have to wait until I can get my hands on one so that I can test all of that stuff and then let you know about it. So those are the five questions that I asked Flash Forge about the 85X. And I know that there are plenty of other questions to be had about this printer, but they are at form next and we should be learning more about it in the coming days. And when the printer is shipped out to the public, and hopefully if I'm able to get my hands on one, then I can cover more of the questions that you have more in depth with individual videos, similar to what I did with the Adventure 5M. So if there's any other really big news that comes out of that trade show or otherwise I'll be sure to let you know about it but until then this is the latest so thank you all so much for watching till next time take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon